Hey everybody, you are tuned into the Free Map Podcast. I didn't even have it recording a little bit ago, talking into thin air. It's really nice. But that's one of those big things about having a first class uh, libertarian podcast from the mean streets of Mogadishu. A bombed out bunker in the parking lot of the Mogadishu Downs. Well, here's the thing, guys. I know I usually, on uh, traditionally on Fridays, we had little articles. Uh, m- made them about libertarian or social events. Uh, lately, I've been doing some single subject stuff. Um, today's was regarding uh, just the PC and woke world. And it was, I think it was Donald J. Mc, uh, Donald G. McNeil Jr., formerly of the New York Times. And to give you, I will leave the link below. I had went through it a minute ago, and I'm just going to, to the, the meat and potatoes. In his world, I think he was on top of the world, and he was used to dealing with these journalist types. And he lived in kind of like this liberal, liberal law land. There's some, there's some good... There's very few of these raw journalists left. Most of the people have done the woke thing. He was used to being around the woke world, and the woke people turned on him. Um, the story was, I, he had used the N-word in context. He talked about, in South Africa, being minstrel, uh, minstrel shows, um, people in blackface. He talked about cultural appropriation and things like that. And... You know, he tried to clarify what happened in the New York Times. You know, he said, hey, I think this is like admitting that um, uh, the Daily Beast is like admitting to them that the story was accurate. He's not going to, I mean, he didn't apologize. He tried to give a, a clarification. And he goes, no, I'm sorry. I do not feel like I said or did anything offensive. This makes it sound like I targeted someone with a racial slur. I did not. I asked whether the word had been used. And it said that Charlotte used the same word exactly the same way when asking me if I used the word. They used the word in the Times and discussions of whether or not the word can be used. And there's some links. I have heard executive editors use the word in that context. If I can't give the context I offered, I prefer to say nothing. And of course, uh, one of the bigwigs above them had proposed the following. And... Um, there's uh, some italics, so I'll give you a direct, uh, the best of, best of my ability to give you a direct quote. And it said, uh, following the investigation, he recognized and regretted that some of his comments had offended students on the tour, including his repeating a racist slur in the context of discussing with the students an incident in which the use of that slur had been the central issue. Um, which sounds like word soup. And that... I've been told in my life, you need to come out and just say, no, this this is wrong. That sounds like word soup. Of course, uh, it looks like Mr. McNeil replied, no, thank you. Please say nothing for me. I may still be a stubborn Catholic schoolboy. I will take the beating, but if I didn't commit the sin, I won't ask for forgiveness. Thank you. That's good. And of course, uh, it said, uh, 349, knowing that conflicts inevitably meant trouble for me, uh, he sent uh, Dean Baquet, Baquet, B-A-Q-U-E-T, my apologies, the executive editor, a note. I summarized what had happened right up to my stubborn Catholic schoolboy reply and added, if this is going to turn into another matter of discipline, could I ask you to appoint someone else to oversee it? Someone else. Carolyn or Matt or someone. I know not this Matt. I know that Charlotte is the company lawyer on this stuff, but she and I have too much baggage from arguments at the bargaining table for this not to be a conflict of interest. And this, and he says, this is especially true as we're entering labor negotiations again. I'm officially on the negotiating team for the guild. That's, a, I think, the Times Guild. Although I am taking almost no part in the preparation since I'm too busy to focus on contract issues. Of course, he didn't uh, apply, and then he said only, but Donald... This is Dean. He goes, but Donald, it was dumb, and whether you meant it to be that way or not, it was insensitive. In other words, people shouldn't use, what was it, use uh, some tactical brain power to figure out what somebody was saying, like processing. 
you know, we used to call that like use of a, you know, used to having brain cells bounce around and tell you what was going on. And of course, um, it said, uh, 4 p.m. sent sent it to him the B story. I hadn't read it since it was a. Uh, I wasn't a subscriber, and he's too irritated to pay him. Uh, oh, an internal times in internal m- m- email got leaked. Of course, he replied, "I'm just going to keep quiet. Anyone knows me isn't going to believe this." And of course, phone calls from unknown numbers, messages, multiple emails began pouring in. I ignored most, but stupidly replied to the Washington Post. Don't believe everything you read, which is something I've, I've told people, especially journalists, because uh, unknown source, a anonymous source that we can't find anymore. I meant it as a flip, I guess it's supposed to be flippant way to indicate, I can't comment, but the B story is wrong. It now seems clear that the Post reporter read it as, don't believe the Times press release, which what is what you should have said to begin with. Of course, Daniel, Danielle, pardon me, told me that the Post had asked for a reply to my reply and said, I'm afraid your comment may backfire and I would recommend not replying similarly to other reporters. For example, one possible outcome is that the students on that trip could start sharing their stories on social media and were in for days for coverage. Of course, everybody wrote stories that evening. I continued to misread the situation. No, he didn't. Just... I think the, the, the iceberg's starting to fall. I thought it was ridiculous for serious papers to pick up the B story. In my mind, I'm a relatively obscure science reporter covering diseases no one else is interested in. And that Peru trip had been just one distant week in a long career. Of course, phone calls I got the next day, Friday, from a Vanity Fair article. Um... I know that the Times management had taken it far more seriously than I realized. Top management had met by Zoom with black reporters. Probably woke folks. There were department by department Zoom meetings about it. Slack channels were aflame. Because everybody knows it's going to be passive aggressive instead of going to your face about it. You should have learned real quick that these people, a lot of them are chicken shits. Ask a Marine, they'd probably go to your face and say something's bullshit, so... You should have been a Marine, Don. All right. The Guild held an emergency meeting of its unit council, which sounds pretty evil. I was on the council, but I I don't know if I was invited since those messages go to a non-times email. I sometimes forget to check for days. Word that McNeil refused to apologize had spread. My reply reply to the Washington Post had angered management. Okay. Um... Do, 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 do. They reached me on a conference call. I guess it was a following Friday. The staff was upset, according to Dean. He knew I was not racist, he said, but I was also being too stubborn, and if I could apologize, it would help. Bullshit. I said I'd been willing to apologize on Thursday, but I wanted to explain that the article was full of false accusations. He asked me to work with Celia, in this quotations, work with Celia, on an apology. I said I would and started drafting one. And then something I never expected occurred. His first wife called him. Either she had volunteered to help me or Dean had asked her or both. I was still unclear. I absolutely believe then and still believe that she was doing it out of kindness. But I felt it created an awkward situation. She and I had a famously hostile divorce more than 20 years ago. But they got better. Especially since our, the, the daughters had gotten married. First grandkid was born. That's awesome. Um, yes, and then sometimes a cat will make noise. Um, when you're not meowing, Suzanne told me that she had listened in on meetings that day, and the situation was far more serious than I realized. There was so much anger that my job was in danger. Dean's might be in danger, so you should basically sell out for somebody else. The chancellor people had called, implying that the prize might be withdrawn. Boo, boo hoo. And my Pulitzer Prize nominations could be dropped. You know what? Stick up. Pull, pull, was it? Gird your loins. Get ready for battle. Do you, look, if, do you believe in anything? Like, are you that scared of anything? Just pull, 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 pull the twins up and get, get going. And he said, uh, 
I felt like revealing every deal to detail would calm the situation. It just makes it worse. And it says the Times wanted a minimum of detail. Reference only to use of the slur and a, a broad apology to anybody uh, deep as I could make to everyone who felt aggrieved. In other words, people that got, uh, that got uh, triggered. Of course, six hours, they you struggle to agree on the war wording and then you've got a cat somebody's cat shows up not my cat either that's the irony and it says that uh went through so many drafts and he's i was exhausted and hungry said fine and of course uh the next morning they conveyed the message that my statement needs uh, needs to needs to more comprehensive in responding to the issues raised in the daily beast article and then you get a tail in your face. That's really good. Let's, let's get the cat out of here. There we go. Um, of course, the, she drafted another paragraph saying the students had misunderstood what I said about white privilege and institutional racism, both of which, of course, exist, which, nah. <laughs> Come to the dark side. We'll get to that. It also mentioned the blackface issue, giving few details. Meow. But alluding to a Cape Town carnival, also sent that on. Neither email was uh, answered. Of course, there's a bunch of emails flying around that nobody heard anything. Of course, spending the weekend away. Um, sad, some sad family stuff. God bless that guy. Uh, for me, w weekend was a long blur of answering emails and text. Of, of from friends saying how outraged they were at the Beast article and others and how the Times was handling it. That's nice. I wrote a detailed potential reply to the Beast article summarizing what, from my perspective, had really happened. I sent it to a few friends and two leaders of the Guild local. Um, then I thought better of that and sent follow-up notes asking them to share it with no one. Just before 7 a.m., I wrote a note to my colleague. It read, uh, I think we haven't met... I wanted to come up to you after your guild presentation, tell you how much you admired. You were head of Myers, had to get home, and the cat. There's a cat that says hello. And Patty Cohen tells me you're doing some fact-finding about what happened. Um, of course, the gentleman said uh, after the article came out, he felt completely trapped. They're in damage control mode and want the story to die quickly. They've instructed me not to answer the beast, to shut up, and do everything through the... the uh, Corporate uh, communications, Corpcom. Yes, meow. And they're mad at me for saying I don't believe don't believe everything you read. Of course, nobody wants you to say anything. That's these are my words, but that leaves me unable to say anything. Which, which means, means everyone, everyone who doesn't, doesn't know me assumes I must be a monster. I know that above everything else, journalists want answers, answers so they can form, form their own opinions. opinions. I gather that I many colleagues are wondering what the hell the Times is doing. To keep a monster on staff, I would wonder myself: Can I send you some of the facts? Talking about, can you try not to leak it into the press? Of course, she heard nothing. Had a couple notes from other friends, and there's a cat trying to torture you. He got called on his birthday. Talked about. Somebody didn't have a very good notes. Whatever. Says, says, um, Dean, Dean um, you know, like, uh, that's great. Um, Donald, I know you, I know you're not a racist. We're going ahead with, with your Pulitzer. We're writing to the board telling them that we looked into this two years ago. But, but Donald, you lost the newsroom. People are hurt. People are saying they won't work with you because you didn't apologize. Get that. I did write an apology. I said, sent it to you Friday night. Sent another paragraph on Saturday morning. Don't, didn't you get it? He didn't answer. Of course, Carolyn says, I saw it. But Donald, you lost the newsroom. And a lot of your colleagues are hurt. A lot of them won't won't work with you. Thank you for writing an apology, but we'd like you to consider adding to it that you're leaving. What? I said, Lolly, are you kidding? You want me to leave after 40 plus years? Over this, and you know this is bullshit. You know you looked into it, and I didn't do the things that I, they said I did. I wasn't some crazy racist. I was just answering the kids' questions. Donald, you lost the newsroom. People won't work with you. 
What, what are, are you talking, talking about? about? Since, Since when, when do we get, get to choose who we work with? Donald, you've had a great year. You're still up for a Pulitzer. And I'm supposed to do what? Well, supposed, supposed to what? Call into the ceremony from our retirement home? Donald, there are other complaints that you made people uncomfortable. X, Y, and Z. I remember looking at the snow in my garden. Maybe I know exactly what X, Y, and Z are. And who said I did X, Y, and Z? I'm happy to answer anything, but I have to know what I'm being accused of. None, neither of them responded. It felt like an attempt to intimidate me. Of course, let me give you an alternate room of who's lost the newsroom. I've been getting emails and calls from bureaus all over the world saying, hang in there, you're getting screwed. Of course, they talked about people getting outraged, getting trashed by the Times. It says, if you fire me over this, you're going to lose everybody over age 40 the paper. They're all grown-ups. They talk about, um, you know, about people are going to you know, quit and go talk to other media, the columnists. The right wing will have a field day. We're not firing you. We're asking you to consider resigning. You're twisting my arm. We're not twisting your arm. Just mentioning, just bringing it up, it's twisting my arm. Nobody in 45 years suggested I resign. Charlotte has threatened me fire a couple of times, and that's different. It's always, it's always bullshit. Nobody ever suggests I resign. I should shut up and get a lawyer. I need a lawyer. Of course, Dean and Carolyn pretend not to hear it. We're not twisting your arm. We're asking you to consider it. Of course, I'm not asking you to consider it. I'm just not quitting like this. Of course, please consider it. No. Of course, um, you know, he talked over with a friend, and he talked to some guild officers and started looking for a lawyer, which I don't blame him. And of course, um, of course, he could be reinvestigated, but I could still be in danger. Companies can miss a, they can offer transfer him into a dead end job. I hope he gets so miserable he quits. And they watch him like a hog for a new mistake he could be fired for. In the early afternoon, I heard back. Um, um, do, 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 do. Okay, um, you know, Nicole had wrote back, talked about getting back to me, you know, wanting facts. Okay, the only contact he ever had. Of course, he found a lawyer, and you know, of course, he uh, stayed in contact with his guild officers. The, the, of course, the guild was split, so he needed his own lawyer, smart. Tell her that Dean had asked me to resign. Uh, and now I had a lawyer signaling I won't be able to talk to her again. She understood. They said, if you refuse to leave voluntarily, you wouldn't be the lead pandemic reporter anymore. No more big front, front page stories. No more appearances on the daily. Through the union, I have also been told that at the Friday online meeting with black reporters, Dean Carolyn and the company's president, had asked anyone who had a problem with Donald to reach them privately. That could be read either of two ways. Either simple due diligence looking for a pattern of bad behavior, and that's regarding sexual harassment cases sometimes, or as a fishing for new charges. Of course, he sends an email. You may have already been hit with this. I retain counsel. He's made contact with the uh, Times General Counsel. Okay, uh, when it's over, still be friends. You want to meet for a beer in L.A. Okay, Donald. Uh, he replied, of course, my friend, I understand. That's the last time they were in contact. Okay, four, year, four days later, at the Times request and urging, I allowed the Times to announce I was stepping down. As we were finalizing everything, the Times forwarded the statement that it would issue phrases of a note from Dean and Joe. Colleagues, we are writing to let you know that Donald McNeil Jr. will be leaving the company. Donald joined the Times in 76. He's done good reporting in four decades. But Donald agrees that this is the right next step. We do not tolerate racist language regardless of intent. I insisted, but Donald agrees that be removed. It was changed to, but we feel that. And... I know this, that it sounds a little hokey, but, you know, he was reaching out to people, and, of course, um, I think the Guild was actually on his side. It says that they're pissed off and ready to arbitrate. Of course, it says he was clean, didn't drink anything. Um, students asked him political questions. 
He's, he's being, being upfront, upfront about, about things. things. Of course, um... Of course, it, it sounds like, uh... Do, 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 do. It sounds like, uh, a little more of everything. It says, 13 students complained, five days worth of conversations. Everything I said, had said back then was twisted up and misinterpreted. I was asked if I laughed at a shaman. I told a joke about a Jewish mother, um, about wanting to photograph naked teenagers, and, and a bunch of other weird things that's kind of a... Uh, really off, but none of the counselors ever said anything to me. One was cold, but two were friendly. Said, um, uh, it's funny, uh, kind of a little quotation of what would happen. Eh, this person feels like uh, deliberately targeted by a pack of mean girls. Pick your puss. I don't mean my, mind them so much. They're just teenagers. Um, I mean... And it was talking about, you know, how much you love things, little little articles and letters and what have you. Um, here's the thing. I'm, I'm not going to read through this, the, the, you know, through the, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're writing to each other or whatever. Talk about, talk about contract and, of course, um, of course, you know, talk about the guild was wanting to know about this and quotations and, of course, some, some students, a bunch of students got offended for some reason. On top of the union's grievance chairman. Um, we're talking about, I mean, various people, like uh, uh, obituaries that had the N-word in it, what have you. Um, we're talking about different notes and what have you. Uh, I mean, look, it, it's all disagreements, all these little, like, Penny any things. I was going to say, as much as these people want to think like there's some like bastions of freedom, they're 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 their own profession, and they're a bunch of fickle, a bunch of fickle assholes. And that's where that's what happened. I mean, like I'm looking through looking through his, his paperwork, and you know what people were offended by, and it's I mean it's just a sign of the times. Like such just cowardice and low-end weak people and PC crap. That's all it is. Somebody's literally trying to find a reason to get mad. And you know what? He's, you know, when he was dealing with that and I mean I mean, it's funny because it keeps going. I only thought it was a couple of different parts, but here's the thing. I mean, I'll leave the link below, but the thing is that you need to start looking at people like this and, and in a way you ought to feel sorry for them, I'll tell you why. Because when they snap out it, they're going to be like, this is ridiculous, you people are bonkers, I was on your side. They won't stick up for you. And soon enough you're like, either you're going to be like sick for a little while, you're going to have like this, you're going to be jonesing, and like, you know, you're going to have that like junk flu and then you're going to be like, eventually you're going to be like, these people were just idiots. And you're going to find out that you're free and you're on, you can come to the dark side. And, yeah, I mean, this this guy sounded like a guy who cut his teeth and came good with words. And just sounds like he, just sounds like he got sold out by a bunch of penny any people that don't know how to hold a discussion. And... You know what? I've, I've had that problem, and, and like, like these kids, the wrong damn people were. I mean, that's what it sounds like you, you ran into. And you know what? I mean, <laughs> asking people questions, and I mean that's all it sounded like. You gotta, you gotta read your own. You gotta read this stuff yourself. It's, it's comedy gold mine, but you, you you've gotta start thinking like this guy got. I mean, he got burned by his own. Uh, was it hoisted on your own petard? I don't even know if that qualifies here, but it's it's garbage. And I was like, they can do that to your own people. I said, I, I, we need to start telling these people, get off the woke crap. We need to go to everyone. Hunter Thompson never fell for that. They would have they would have roasted him. I mean, it's kind of sad he committed suicide, but he left the planet at the right time. I just I want you guys to consider that kind of stuff and. 
this, this is what's, what's I mean, this, this is this is the world you're living in. in. And I'm hoping this open letter to here's here's the the end part of the open letter to Don, Don McNeil. All right, just drop what the, that those forty years. Even though you can't forget about it, it's your time to open up and say this woke crap and these wokists, this PC crap, and even like the the burgeoning like leftist morons that are in, infecting the New York Times. Fight against those. Come over to the normal, what journalists used to be, that the critical thinking element, and not this, this you know, somebody at Columbia told me to be soft crap. You can, you can hoist up, just grab the, grab the twins and get on with your life. But it's time to fight back. Just join, join these people. Join everybody else. All right? I know you can do it, man. All right? Well, I did want to end up on a more positive note and say finding purpose and finding a reason in life, find a reason to be better and to fight, and you can be help somebody else's life be better. All right? Now, obviously, Mr. McNeil, I doubt you are going to see this, but there's an email down there. Now, for everybody else, hit like, like, and then subscribe in the notifications. There should be a link all the way down there. I'm found on Twitter, Gab, Parlor until they blow it up again. But um, until then, please take care of yourself and uh, live long with liberty.